Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I'm your host, Mark Aberti, the content marketing expert, bringing you five new episodes every week where I and top level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success listeners. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. One of the things that we need to have is an abundant mindset. It is so critical for all the things that uh, we do. It is critical for uh, successfully launching any business project like a podcast. So we're going to talk about how to build an abundant mindset. We're also going to dive a little bit into podcasting as well because Today's guest is actually someone who's quite special. He was named by Inc. Magazine as one of the top 13 business shows in 2017. He's the host of four shows on the Conscious Millionaire Podcast and Radio Network. He's also a 34-time best-selling author, speaker, and high-performance coach who is known for his live on-camera trainings where he helps coaches and entrepreneurs find $50,000 or more in hidden revenues and then develop steps to put it into the bank. He is also the founder of Conscious Millionaire and the High Performer Bootcamp.com. Today's guest for episode 238 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than JV from the third. JV, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, Mark, I and everybody at Conscious Millionaire are excited to be here and a huge hello to everybody listening. I work with high performers and I know if you're listening, you want to set some new summits and you want to get there. And today we're going to be talking about abundance mindset. I also do podcast work with business success people, um, coaches, consultants who really want to build a top podcast themselves as a content platform. And I mean, like, I'm just really looking forward to diving into this. Thank you for giving us a little more of a background um, about you and what you do, especially the podcasting side, because a lot of us are content creators and podcasting is a really great avenue. So we're going to talk about that abundant mindset uh, very uh, soon, but I'd like to get some background. So uh, you wrote the book Conscious Millionaire, and I'm wondering if you give us some background into why you wrote the book and how exactly would you define a conscious millionaire? Yeah, well, let's start with how I define a conscious millionaire. There are three different ways to define conscious in my book. I talk about awareness. So that's awareness of how business works. It's awareness of what your clients want. It's awareness of what's going on in the industry. But there's a second part, and that's having visionary consciousness. Whenever you talk about a visionary leader or a visionary business person like Steve Jobs, they had a vision of something more, Gandhi is visionary. All of that comes into being a visionary person who can build something bigger, Elon Musk, than most people are building. And then the third way to think about uh, conscious, which is really relevant today, it's where a lot of entrepreneurial money is actually gonna be made, and that's looking at social consciousness and having a conscious social impact in how you build your business. Solving the big problems in the world today are going to create some of the biggest companies on the planet and some of the biggest wealth that we've ever seen by being more conscious about the type of business that you are creating. So a conscious entrepreneur is somebody who really has a bigger purpose. They want to make a big impact with their business. And then the millionaire part to me has the component of making big money. So turning that big impact into big money, but also big fulfillment, because we all as entrepreneurs, we wanna have a great life and we wanna feel that what we're doing matters, but we'd like to be putting money in the bank and having the lifestyle that we want as well. And bringing that all together, that's Conscious Millionaire. And in the book, you list uh, seven key millionaire habits that we need to develop. And I'll just list them all here because they're really good. So I'm just gonna, Listen, also make conscious choices, develop laser focus, take fast action, do what's right, 
leverage yourself daily, seek opportunities and to learn and grow. And habits are like who we are. Habits are a big part of our mindset. So for those particular seven, how exactly do we go developing those habits? Because if you want to be a millionaire, one of the big ways to do it is to develop the habits that other millionaires are currently employing. Well, I believe in taking something and having a laser focus on it. So my formula for creating wealth is conscious focused action, which is where the first three habits come out of that formula. What I find is that most of the entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, business owners who are not over 100,000 because I work with people who really want to be over 100,000, but then I do a lot of private coaching with seven and eight figure companies as well. And what I find is the big difference is they take time at that first stage of being conscious, but conscious of what? Well, three things. What is the top priority? Let's think in the next 30 days, Mark, what's the top priority for you? If you're listening in the next 30 days to take your business forward, and ask yourself, why are you choosing that priority over everything else that you could do? Now, here's the secret. The entrepreneurs who are not highly successful, who typically never get to 100,000, certainly don't get to a million, are going in 10 directions every 30 days. But it's one direction that's going to make the difference. And then there are two more questions to ask at that becoming conscious stage. And that is, who else do you need on your team? Which is really asking the resource questions. What other resources do you need other than yourself? And how are you going to best get there? So you have a mapped out plan and you do all that before you take step one, action one. And what I find is the people who are highly successful, they respect and take the time to do that every month. And people who are floundering and, and constantly not getting the clients they want and not making the money they want. It's because they're going in too many directions and they never take that 48 hours at the beginning of every month to get clear about where they're going. So to me, that's where it all starts. But I want to jump to the fourth habit because when I assembled these seven habits, the six of them, the first three and the last three kind of came together. And then the fourth one, I kept switching out. You know how when you're building something, you go, yeah, that's a great habit. And I'd sleep on it for a couple of nights and go, no, that's not it. That's not it. And I realized what I was looking for was the quintessential habit, the one that would really stand out and define conscious millionaire in a way that was different and better than almost anything I'd ever seen on the planet. And it's always do what's right. It's amazing when you're busy building your business, yes, you've got to have policies about how things work. You've got to have systems, but I'm a huge systems person. You've got to have rules about how the people in your team are going to interact. You've got to have rules about the kind of customer service, the guarantee, when it can be refunded. But when everything's said and done, there are going to be events that happen. Events are just something that occurs in your business that are going to be unexpected, and you have to make a decision. Here's how to make it. Just go inside and ask yourself, in this situation, forget the rules, forget the policies for a moment, what would be the right thing to do? And I guarantee you that if you'll consistently focus on doing the right thing, you'll build loyal fans, you'll build loyal customers, you'll build a loyal team, because in the end, you're treating everybody in a way that's right. And you're saying, this is an unusual situation. What's important to me is to do what's right here. And I really like that idea where, like, regardless of the situation, doing so that's right because it's tempting, like, in certain situations to do something that maybe gives you one result, but doesn't like it's bad in the long term. Like going after profit, for instance, and maybe doing a few things that you shouldn't be doing on your way to that profit. So I really like that habit. Do what's right, and all the other habits that you include in there. Like habits are a big part of uh, developing our mindset and just uh, Absolutely. who we are. And um, I'm wondering if you could go a little deeper into how we can have an abundant mindset. Sure. Well, let's tag off of the habit of leverage every day and move that into abundance. People who are highly successful, highly profitable, build businesses that make big impacts, they're always waking up in the morning asking how to leverage. Almost every day, I've got two to three hours set aside to focus on marketing and sales. And all of that is usually a lot of leverage time. Like I may be calling somebody I know and saying, 
who do you know who might benefit from this? So that's leveraging all their potential people that they know. Or this morning I sent out messages to 30 people on LinkedIn. And I said, this is who I am. This is what I do. If you'd like to get these kind of results, would you like to set up a time to talk? And within 10 minutes, I already had sent out uh, a message back with my link setting up a call that could potentially lead to money. So every day you've got to ask yourself, how do I market and sale, but how do I do it in a way that leverages me? And then opportunities. I'm always open to opportunities and I want to suggest that you create some criteria as to what would be a good opportunity for you. So here's the problem. Opportunities are everywhere. People go, oh, I don't have enough opportunities. No, the problem is you've got way too many if you open your eyes and look around you. But not every opportunity is the right opportunity for you. It's not going to take you in the direction you want. So you've got to have clarity. This is where I want to go. And then write down a few criteria, three to five criteria. This would make a great opportunity to me. Practice it with a friend. Saying it out loud somehow makes you more aware than if you just write it down and you go, oh, no, there's something missing or that's not exactly it. And describe to several people you know, these, this would be the best opportunity I could find. Now, I'm going to ask you to tell your mind when you go to bed at night to ask and, and actually focus it in a question. How can I find this opportunity in the next 24 hours? It's amazing. Keep a pad by your bed. You'll wake up in the morning likely with a lot of our uh, ideas. And then throughout the day, you'll probably be getting more ideas. But equally important, as you go through your day, you're going to notice, even when you're on the internet, oh, wait a minute, that looks like an opportunity. I think I'll contact them. Let's look and see if they have a phone number. Or when you're at a meetup, like I'm going to two meetups uh, this week on Wednesday, one in the morning for three hours, one for two hours in the evening. I'm going with clear criteria of who I want to meet. So as soon as I begin a conversation within 60 seconds, I know, is this the person? Is this not? And... Here's the other thing about creating an abundance mindset. Abundant people are listeners. They're always listening to hear what's, what's being said. What's the nugget there? What's the opportunity there? And then they have a conversation to explore it. So abundance really is a mindset. And I work with high performers. So a high performer is somebody who wants to go to a summit that they aren't currently at and they're determined to get there. The fact that they don't know today how to get there doesn't matter. I can tell you 15 years from now, I'm selling Conscious Millionaire and I'm selling it for $50 million. Now, I put that out all over the place. So you could go, Chief, hey, what if it doesn't happen? I'm going, hey, what if it happens because I put it out all over the place and people come to me with ideas about, hey, have you ever thought about doing this piece of software? You thought about doing this or, hey, I'd love to partner with you or I'd like to have you on my stage. Last week alone, I got invited to three stages in the next nine months, one in Sydney, Australia. So simply by putting out who I am, you can do the same thing. You just need criteria when you walk in the room to know what is a real opportunity for you and then let the others go They're for somebody else and who is it you want to meet? So if you know who you want to meet and why, and you know what is a good opportunity, when you walk in a room, it is a gold mine. Uh, people who come from abundance are always looking for the gold mine, and they know it's there. It is. It's there for everyone. I guarantee you there is a gold mine right in front of you, and that you're going to be in that gold mine this week. The question is, will you be prepared to mine the gold mine and take the gold home with you? And I'm sensing a theme here where you focus on building relationships and getting to know as many people as possible. And I think that's like, like that's one of the benefits of starting a podcast like this one. Uh, on. it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm glad you brought that up because in four years, uh, we're about to launch our fifth podcast in, in uh, September. And in four years, I've had 1,500 episodes and over 1,000 unique guests. As I put it, I don't even do business these days in terms of joint ventures, affiliate relationships. Most of my clients come out either out of somebody who's been on the show, they know somebody, because those are the people that I connect with, but I build deep relationships. And that means, folks, you're not just looking for your criteria, you're actively looking for theirs as well. 
And then I do a lot of connecting, a lot of mutual introductions. And when I do that, I just I do it just out of the kindness of my heart. I don't keep a chalkboard. I don't say, oh, I introduced you know, you know, Sally to to Linda. Uh, now Sally and Linda owe me something. I never look at it that way. I just do it because it feels like it's the right thing to do. Going back to habit number four, always do what's right. And it's amazing how many connections I get, how many mutual introductions I get that I never asked for, didn't expect, and they turn into something amazing. And, and just to further along that point, like I have a podcast coach who's helping me grow my podcast. And one of the things is like uh, you could view each of your interviews as like a sales call potentially with someone who, as JV mentioned, can become a client or someone who may know someone. So there's a lot of benefits with podcasting, but like four, like you're coming out with your fifth podcast, uh, over 1000 uh, unique guests, like how do you manage five of them? I mean, I know I come out with like five episodes a week, but like five podcast shows and promotion is something completely different. So how do you do that? Yeah, I, thank you for asking that. Well, I, you know, this is exactly what I do with my clients who want to build really major podcasts. I mean, I'm not interested in helping somebody just build something and they just say they're a podcaster. I want them to have a, a top podcast. And it, the answer is we build everything on systems. We have a system for every phase of everything we do, and all the systems interact with each other seamlessly. They're all designed to be efficient, to not allow things to fall through the cracks, and in order to get everything out. So we have a system for how we find guests. We have a system for how guests sign up. We have a guest system for how we get the guest on time to the podcast recording. We have a system for what happens after that that I do. So there's a mini system that JB does putting the information in a Google Doc that my team needs. Then we have two different team members who are handling different pieces of it. One's doing the editing, interacting with guests. We have systems for all of that. When it goes up to Libsyn, we've never, we, we don't miss you know, broadcasting a show. It goes out to different distribution networks. Each one of those is a system for when we send it to them and how it's packaged. Um, we do our recordings as if it were a radio show on a time clock. So I have literally four pages of script in front of me that tell me where I should be with each question at each time uh, that I'm on a recording with someone. We batch things. That's a system. I typically do seven shows in a day when I record. So I'll do four hours of recording, an hour break, three hours of recording, um, JV's done. Seven, seven hours is, uh, of recording is quite a lot in a day. I laugh at all these people in Hollywood that like, oh, we do a show a day. And I'm going, yeah, I do seven. So... But it's all batch, it's all on systems, a system for how all the marketing is created, a system for how the marketing goes out, a system for how we interact with guests after the show to get them to market for us. All those are systems and we built them and it's why we're able to do so much and be very efficient about it. And you mentioned how you t like, say like, well, I should be at this time on this question. How do you like maintain that consistently because like I know like a conversation will take a different turn or uh, some people uh, speak faster or slower than you would expect. So like, do you always hit those times or are you just uh, estimates? Well, uh, they're, they're not estimates. We know that it takes 26 to 27 minutes by the time we do editing and by the time we put on you know, the front roll, the mid roll, the outro uh, to create a 30 minute show. Uh, we're going to edit it twice. We're going to edit it for podcasting and we're going to edit it for radio shows because we're on multiple radio shows. So we put out our podcast as a radio show. That's why we need a time clock. But to address your question directly, um, the first part of my show is, an, is a uh, discussion, but it has an outcome. It has steps. Sometimes I find that I need two or three minutes extra for that. But if I do that, when I go to break, which for us is technically three seconds when we're recording, but then I have a conversation and then we, we come back for real with the guest and I say, this is how long we have. And so in that case, I'll go, if I have to interrupt, I will. I just want you to know in advance that we have to end on time. So I treat it like a radio show. And I like, like, uh telling the guests in advance so it's not something that uh, is a surprise. Like, why are we going so fast for the show? Like, you understand. So 
I really do like that approach. And um, one of the things I want to touch on, you mentioned the mid-roll ads, the front roll ad, I think you referred to the first one too. So um, how do you get sponsors for your podcast? Yeah. Well, you know, I looked at, I, I did that for a year and I looked at where, where's the real money. And here's the truth. Most of the podcast sponsors are difficult to work with. And they're difficult to work with because they want to treat the ad like a Facebook ad. It's not a Facebook ad. The people in radio, which is now where we're headed, they want a relationship with the host. Most of the podcast sponsors are not looking at that. They're looking at every host is the same, and they're going to give some ridiculously short period of time for testing. And if it doesn't act like a Facebook ad, they're not going to be happy. And as you well know, the uh, sponsors tend to jump, 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 jump. So I said, okay, that's just way too time consuming. So now we sponsor our own things. On my health show, I have a permanent sponsor. And so they do the health show with me. And then I have a percentage of the back end off of that. And I'm currently, because the shows are so good, I have a spa um, health uh, clinic that's outside the country that's going to give me, we're in the final stages, $10,000 spa a week for me to talk about their spa on my show. So what I'm finding is exchanges are really good. I get clients, get people in my boot camps. So we give away our own things on those, those times. And then we've decided that the only sponsors we want are those who really value the relationship with me, value the relationship with Conscious Millionaire as a brand, and they're going to give a slice of their um, their advertising dollar to having a relationship with us. And that's who we found to be the best. And then I do some affiliate things with people uh, who have events coming up or have a product that I believe in. So I do it more on a relationship basis than I do the traditional way. Let's just go get a sponsor and plug them into six shows or 12 shows. And I like the relationship because it's someone who you can continue to count on. And with affiliate promotions, you promote an evergreen affiliate offer. and You can promote those forever and um, be able to make some good commissions depending on how the affiliate uh, program is structured. One of the things I want to ask, you said you're going to shift to radio instead of podcast. Can you explain? Um, oh, no, I'm not instead of. We oh, do. Okay. Our, all of our shows are both podcast and syndicated radio shows. So we go both directions. Okay. Yeah. And that's actually been good because we'll, I'm not going to mention the name of the, but one of the major radio uh, companies in the country and I are in talks right now. We'll see what happens about me doing a business pure business radio show, which would then go out as a podcast, but it's designed to possibly become syndicated on a major network as a radio show. And it's because I've done 1500 episodes. It's because I already work with a, with a radio clock. So I understand that 12 minutes is 12 minutes and that you have to end at the end of 12 minutes. So to me, it's about distributing as many different ways as you can that are valuable to you. So why just be a podcast? So when I work with clients, I help them design a podcast that's going to be a major podcast and then launch it as a major podcast, but it's designed to be very high quality. And that that makes a huge difference, how you design your interview flow. And how would a podcaster expand into radio? Like, would you have to reach out to a bunch of people? Like, Because I know there's Libsyn for podcasts and other options. Is it different for radio? Uh, no, you have to reach, you have to reach out and talk to radio people. Okay. And, uh, one of the questions I want to also address, I mean, you've have built relationships with a lot of people. You have a lot of, uh, coaching clients. You, uh, have met a lot of listeners through your show. So I wonder if you could share with us, like, what do you believe holds most people back from, uh, being able to achieve the success they want to achieve? Yeah, I think there, there are multiple things that hold them back. I mean, first of all, the reason that I work with high performers and help them go to a new level, and that includes people who say, yeah, I want to be a high performer, is that it all begins in the mind. Making money begins in the mind. Building an impact with other people begins in the mind. Creating your business begins in the mind. Having a successful day begins in the mind. 
So I find that first and foremost, it's because of how someone is thinking and how they've connected their thoughts. So I have nine years of NLP, so I bring neuro-linguistic programming into what I do with people. So it's really how people think and then how that thinking connects to a state and to the behaviors that they choose that's gonna make the biggest difference because without that, you're never gonna have a world of abundance because you could be living in a world of scarcity. But beyond that, you've got to build the right business model. And I inevitably am working with clients who I'm helping them redo their business models. And even if there are seven or eight figure business, there are things that they can change to make it more effective, to make it more profitable, uh, to make it more laser focused on the right clients that are really gonna want to buy, to provide only the products and programs that are necessary, get rid of everything else, because I believe in lean design, doing the least amount possible to get the biggest result that you can. So it's the mindset, it's the business model, and then, of course, the third part is the execution, is that you've got to have a good execution. And execution is all, we talked about my podcast, how do I do now five podcasts? How do I have 1,500 episodes in four years? It's systems. Execution really is internal systems, how you're set up as a person, how your team is set up, how your business is set up, and the external systems for how you interact with the world and your customers all of that execution is how you set up systems, and that makes the biggest difference. When you have good systems in place where you've thought through every step and you know exactly what needs to happen now and then what needs to happen next, that's when you can scale your business and truly become profitable. And throughout this episode, I've heard a really big theme where uh, having systems in place really makes a big difference. And I do have systems for the Breakthrough Success podcast as well. But like since systems have been so important for you and uh, like you've like five uh, shows and that's just podcasts. That doesn't even include the 34 best selling books. How do you create a good system that allows everything to flow smoothly? Yeah, it's a great question. The first thing you need to do is start with what is the outcome you want. So then everything you do in the system has to be designed so that you're only taking actions or steps that are going to get you to that outcome. And this is how we would mind map that or whiteboard it. The first thing is to list out everything that you think needs to occur, all the steps that are necessary in order to go from the beginning, let's call that an input, so a, a guest comes on the show. Let's just say that's the input. Two, it's on the air. It's very successful. It's marketed. People are hearing it. Okay. Now you're going to map out all the different steps that you think are, are necessary. And you're just going to put them up there. No particular order. You just start thinking of things. Second, now organize them in the order in which they need to occur. Now that you're doing that, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to notice that you miss something. And what you're going to miss is that sometimes between, say, step four and step five, you're going to go, wait a minute, something else has to happen here before we get to step five. And then you realize, as we all do, that one of two things has happened. Either we've done this so habitually that we don't even think about it. But if we were explaining it to somebody else, it would have to be one of the steps and therefore it belongs in the system. Or it's just something we haven't thought about yet, you know, that we didn't realize, wait a minute, if the chair is over by the wall and we're going to sit at the dining room table and have dinner, we have to pick up the chair and bring it over there. And instead, in our mind, we've just left it chairs in room, everything's okay. But actually everything isn't okay because you don't want to sit at the chair 10 feet away from the table or stand at the table. But that's an easy example, but this is what happens in our businesses. It's what happens with podcasts. It happens with any kind of content you create. And then you ask, does anything have to happen inside the business or outside the business before you can take the next step? So it may be that you upload, let's say to Libsyn, just because we've used Libsyn as an example, your show, but it isn't coming out until a week from now. So you have to set it so that it comes out at a certain time on that date. 
but now you want to market it. So that's an example of until the show comes out on Libsyn at this time, you don't want your marketing started because the marketing is going to be going to nothing. If you set up links that go to your show, show's not going to be playing if you haven't set it so that it would play. And in any case, you don't really want to market it before it's, it's actually live. And the same thing is, well, you want to give some marketing. So we give all the marketing that anyone needs who's a guest. We give it to them 24 hours in advance. But we want to give that a week in advance because, like all of us that are super busy with our emails, no one would ever remember it seven days from now because they probably don't have a system for what to do with an email that they need to use the next day if they get it a week early. So we take care of all of that. And that is a system. But that's how you have to design everything you do in your business. And that's when you will be heavily, just majorly successful because you're executing in a way that's going to get your maximum results. JV, thank you for sharing with us that brilliant breakdown of creating systems and that whole flow because something that is so uh, habitual to you is not something that is as habitual to the person who you're hiring uh, and they're starting to work with you for the first time. So it's really important to lay out all those steps as JV mentioned. And one of the questions I want to ask you because, I mean, you've had a lot of success, you've helped a lot of people become successful, but I'm wondering if you could share with us one big challenge you faced in your journey and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Well, one of my most recent challenges that certainly affected business was I had a major heart attack on February 5th this year. So not only did I have to cancel 28 show recordings, because it's very hard to record shows both when you're in an ICU unit and when you come home, the doctor said, you're going to have to take the next three weeks and do not, not much. Well, I thought uh, that that would not be true. But by the second day home, I went, hmm, I'm needing to sleep about 18 hours a day, right? Because I just had a major heart attack. So I had to cancel shows. And a lot of good came out of that, actually, because I had a lot of time because I'm so busy. I had a lot of downtime that I don't normally have. And I just kind of lay there and sleep. And then I'd wake up and I'd think of things. And I made some major shifts in the direction. Like I asked myself, you know, I've been working with high performers for a long time. I just never called it that. And I said, well, who do I want to work with the rest of my life? And I said, high performers, people who want to make a big impact, people who want to make a big wave with their life. And they want to be financially successful, not just an average financially successful, but, you know, they want to have their definition of what wealthy means to them. And they want to do, get that money by doing something that's good and helps other people. I said, those are the people I really want to champion because I believe in them. It's who I am. It's who I want to help. And I was able to refine, as I put, really hit the nail right on the target because I had some downtime that I wasn't planning on having. I also had to become really much more efficient because I needed to go back to work and first work like 30 hours a week and then 40. And, you know, so I had to take more time off than I was accustomed to. So now all of a sudden, most of my evenings, if you look at them, instead of me working, I've got like activities. I'm going to concerts. I'm going camping. I'm doing all these things, biking. You know, tomorrow I'm going biking for an hour and a half after I meet with two clients and I'm done at six. I'm on my bike and I'm going to bike for an hour and a half and take the rest of the evening for me. Those are major changes that came out of it. And here's what's happening. The company's making more money. We're more focused. We've launched two more podcasts. Uh, we're, we're connected. We're get, I'm getting asked all over the place to be on stages. So all these things are happening that really came out of having a heart attack and having almost a month of having to reschedule my life. But I had so much time to think I was able to digest life a little bit differently and ask myself important questions. Well, I'm here. What do I really want out of life? And I said, oh, I want to have a good time. I want to have more fun. I want some more downtime. I'm going camping as much as I can all summer long, going to lots of concerts left and right. I was at a concert last night. I go to another concert Thursday night, you know, so, but my business is, is thriving. So these are the things that can come out of something that was a challenge can end up being a moment that pivots into more thriving. 
And um, I really see that as a theme of challenges where like a lot of people, they say a challenge they had and then somehow it uh, made them different. It made them better than what they already were. And uh, one of the things we should do, and this comes from JV's challenge, we should take some time to think about how we're doing with life, things that we want to do and take some time to reflect about all the things that we're doing and we'll come up with better ways to use our time, like how JV is going and we're camping, we're biking and that's also helping out with the business as well. So it was really good to do that kind of reflection that JV uh, shared with us. And uh, one of the things that I also want to cover is, I mean, you've written 34 best-selling books, which is just mind-boggling. I'm sure you've read a lot of books as well. So I wonder if you could share with us three books that you've Well, read. actually, I've, I've written 15 books. Oh. Um, the 34 is referring to Conscious Millionaire, Grow Your Business by Making a Difference. When it launched, it was in 34 categories, number one, and literally became the number one book on Amazon. Wow. I mean, yeah, and that's, um, yeah, like, that, like that's a really good accomplishment. So 15 books, my, my apologies, but um, I wonder if you could share with us three book recommendations for us. Yeah. So, um, so I'm going to share uh, some recommendations of what I'm reading right now. In fact, I have three of them right next to me. One's by Victor Ching, Extreme Revenue Growth. It's on how to take a million-dollar business to a $25 million business book. Uh, the next two are by people who've been on my show. Uh, Focus on Impact by Wendy Lipton Dibner, and I'm actually going to be speaking at her event in January. It's an amazing book. And then a guy you might have heard of, he's associated with this very small software called ClickFunnels. Russell Brunson, who's been on my show, Expert Secrets, really amazing book. All three of these I would recommend, but there's a fourth one, and that's Marcus Aurelius Anderson. We're doing a boot camp together right now for high, it's called the High Performer Boot Camp for Coaches and Consultants, really redoing their business and get them so they can make a lot of money. And he was paralyzed, neck down at the age of 40. The doctors told him he would never walk again. He's 47. I'll give you the short version. He has a black belt in four different martial arts, so I think that qualifies as walking. And he wrote a book, The Gift of Adversity, which is really what we were talking about. Amazing book. I'd highly recommend that. JV, thank you for sharing those great book recommendations. Those will all be in the show notes, marketbirdie.com slash E238. And uh, we're all storing content marketing secrets in there. That's my book, marketbirdie.com slash book. You go there to get your free copy, just pay for the shipping. And uh, before I wrap up this episode, JV, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but I'm wondering if you could share with us one question that you believe we need to be asking ourselves more often. Yeah, it's a, that, that in and of itself is a great question. I think the most important question, when I'm working with people to build a, a really successful podcast, it doesn't start with how much money do you make out of it. It doesn't come start with how much fame do you want from it and how do you want to build your brand. The first question to ask yourself with anything in business is what's the impact you want to make? And then who do you want to make that impact on? Because that's going to be the foundation piece. Because once you know that, then you can take that and turn that impact into big money. But, but you need to start with the impact because that's why people are going to come to you. People aren't going to come to you because you, know, you want to buy a Rolls Royce. They couldn't care less. People are going to come to you because you can make an impact in their life that matters to them. But what's important is you're not just choosing to do that because you think the market will like it. You're choosing to do that first and foremost because you'll like it, because it comes out of your heart. It comes out of your spirit. It comes from your soul. It's something you want to be doing with your life, because when you have that kind of passion and drive and you feel like you're on really on target with your life, you're going to go forward in a different way. And then figure out the good business. I mean, a lot of people make an impact and are broke. You've got to make an impact and also make big money out of it. But you can't make big money out of doing good until you know what the good is you want to do. That, to me, is the most important question you can ask. JV, thank you for sharing with us that great question. All of your great insights to our time. If you guys want to learn more about JV, head over to ConsciousMillionaire.com. Uh, he's got the high performer formula 
up there. So I guess, JV, if you want to like fill in some of the gaps, talk a little bit about sure. what the high performer is. Absolutely. So two, two, two ways you can get in touch with me. First of all, if you're interested in having a conversation, you really want to have a top podcast, let's have a conversation. Just contact me on my cell phone. Send me a text. Just put your name in it and what you want to talk about so I know what it's about. And then we'll set up a time to talk. That's 303 so that's Denver Mountain Time, 303-641-0401. I'm going to give that one more time, 303-641-0401. And then everybody listening, I work with business owners, coaches, consultants. If you want to be a high performer, you want to know exactly what are the steps you need, I've created a formula and I'd love to give that to you. It, you can get it right here, absolutely free, consciousmillionaire.com forward slash high performer. So that's consciousmillionaire.com forward slash high performer. And if you're interested in talking about podcasting, just get me on my cell, 303-641-0401. JV, thank you for sharing with us those ways to get in touch and your free resource. All those will be in the show notes, including JV's number. But JV, I mean, I can't thank you enough for sharing all of your insights. I know that you have a lot of opportunities in front of you. I'm grateful you chose to spend some time with us on Breakthrough Success today. Well, uh, it's been exciting to be here. And I want to say to everybody listening today, I believe you're a high performer. I never think there are any accidents in life. You were supposed to listen to this. And it's time for you to take however big you're playing right now, ask yourself how you could play two, three, five, ten times bigger in the next 12 months, not 12 years. It's time to step it up. And I believe that you can do it. Get the high performance formula. That'll help you take your next step. And I'm just grateful for having the time with you. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn. 